Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at The Predator, released in 2018 as the fourth standalone Predator film. It was co-written and directed by Shane Black, who played the vulgar jokester Hawkins in the original film in 1987. Back before this movie came out, I said that Black would be sure to treat the series right with it. Well, it came out, and turns out, I was dead wrong. Why was The Predator such a disaster? Well, aside from a real-life controversy, wherein Shane Black hired a registered sex offender without telling anyone, the movie itself has a boatload of issues. Most obvious is the fact that it's basically an all-out comedy, with every single character cracking quips like they're in a Joss Whedon jam, but it's also got way too quick a pace and a real tone-deaf depiction of autism, where it's basically played like a fucking superpower. Plus, this thing was reshot and re-edited so many times that the story left remaining is riddled with plot holes and random nonsense. In fact, the only thing this movie seems to get right as a Predator flick is having a high body Count. Here, I'll show you. The movie begins with a Star Wars prequel looking space battle that ends when the ship being pursued escapes through a warp gate. It comes out right near Earth, where it better not leave Michigan hanging again. Just high five the poor state. Come on! The fugitive predator inside this doomed ship knows when to fold him, so he hops into an escape pod and jettisons away, leaving his damaged craft still hurtling towards Earth. Meanwhile, in the Mexican jungle, sniper Quinn McKenna kicks off our kill count by assassinating a cartel member in the middle of a hostage situation. Huh, dude kind of look like drug lord Ron Jeremy there. Immediately afterward, the Preddy ship crashes into a radio tower and sends McKenna Arnolding down a hill, the sky sent destruction falling all around him. He examines the crashed ship and finds some fluorescent Preddy blood, an empty Preddy mask, and a future Preddy victim, his partner Dupree. But hold on, these two are talking about a third partner named Haynes. Not sure where. Oh, he's hanging from a tree, stripped of his skin. Damn, Fugitive Predator did a piss poor job skinning this dude. Looking like the Crypt Keeper or some shit. The Fugitive Predator appears, disappears, and kills Dupree with a blast from his plasma caster. I guess predators don't give a damn. They'll kill you, me, and Dupree. Since McKenna accidentally equipped himself with Pred's wrist gauntlet, he's able to stop Pred and defile his buddy's body all at once. But since Fugitive Preddy's not ready for a nap just yet, McKenna knows he's gotta get out of there, and he escapes the area before a helicopter full of G-Men land. The G-Men are led by Traeger, who's played by the immensely talented Sterling K. Brown in a tragic case of miscasting. They're large, they're fast, and fucking you up to their idea of tourism. McKenna unlocks the secret to Yautja invisibility, which is this, uh, ball, I guess? Then swallows that ball for safekeeping and has the rest of the Pred gear mailed to a P.O. box. It winds up at his house instead, right into the hands of his son Rory, played by professional damaged kid character actor Jacob Tremblay. Rory is somewhere on the autism spectrum, and thus he gets bullied at school by Philistines who can't respect a good game of chess. Don't worry though, since Rory is movie autistic, he's rocking them Rain Man skills. His condition apparently also allows him to figure out alien technology, because after he opens the box to find a Preddy helmet and the wrist gauntlet, he just cruises through the Pred OS without a tutorial like he's a Michael Fassbender android. Should've used a proxy though, kid, because all that beep boopin' attracts the attention of the alien ship that was pursuing the fugitive Predator in the beginning, and now the other Preddy pilot is scanning for targets. Quinn McKenna winds up captured by G-Men at the VA. Wait, wasn't he in Mexico? When the fuck did this happen? I guess there was a scene showing his arrest, but they deleted it. Why? Why would you delete that? The government boys get McKenna to sound crazy by tricking him into talking about aliens, and that gives them an excuse to stick him on a bus with the so-called loonies. Hope you're ready for some overacted character work, cause this bus is full of it. The two chief offenders are Thomas Jane, last seen on the kill count in the mist, playing a dude named Baxley who's got a real bad case of movie Tourette's, Fuck, God, God. Fuck him up. Fuck him up. and sadly, as much as I love him, Keegan-Michael Key, who just hams it up way too much as the crass jokester coil. How do you circumcise a homeless man? Here it comes. Kick your mom in the chin. I feel like Shane Black just rewrote his own character from the first movie and had Key play it. But Coil ends up being just too damn much. Like, dude, just shut the fuck up. Will you shut the fuck up? Less overacted is Lynch, played by Game of Thrones' Alfie Allen, I guess he does card tricks or something, and Nettles, a god-fearing, vampiric-looking dude. Laugh all you want, but when you're standing at attention before your maker... I always stand at attention before I make her. 
Stop! The only one I actually like a little is the leader of the Loonies, Nebraska Williams, played by Trevante Rhodes, who was just seen on the kill count in Bird Box. And hey, while we're at it, let's meet another character. Fuck it. Dr. Casey Brackett, an evolutionary biologist, played by attacker of the show Olivia Munn, gets picked up by G-Men, who ask her for help with their alien problem. They take her to a place called Project Stargazer, and okay, I do like the Haunted Mansion joke they do on the elevator. Is it just your imagination, or is this haunted room actually stretching? She meets amiable Sean Keyes, and I can appreciate the Predator continuity here. Not only does this lab have the actual props and masks from the previous movies in glass cases, but Sean Keyes is the son of Predator 2's Peter Keyes, who was of course played by Gary Busey, the real-life father of Sean's actor here, Jake Busey. That's a lot of fun. Brackett discovers that Project Stargazer has collected a Predator to prod. Dr. Brackett. Would you like to meet a predator? Nah, man, she was the one who got that dude's scenes cut. Brackett meets Traeger and gets a close-up look at the alien, although she snarks about it being misnamed. You know, the data suggests that it tracks its prey, exploits weakness, seems to, well, enjoy it. That's not a predator, that's a sports hunter. Well, we took a vote. Predator's cooler, right? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Still, she's so impressed by the extraterrestrial that she flips the franchise's script. You are one beautiful motherfucker. Oh man, do we have another interspecies shipping on our hands? Apparently Brackett's boyfriend here has human DNA in him, and Project Stargazer wants to know how. You want to know someone fucked an alien. Okay, yep, we are already sliding way too hard into humor here. After the military detects that impending predator ship, alarms go off in the science bunker, and during the noise and confusion, the fugitive predator wakes up, not in the best of moods, and breaks free to bolster our kill count. His first batch of victims includes six people, a woman he uses as a body shield against the bullets coming his way, a dude who falls down randomly to some gunfire in the back there, a guy who gets backhanded across the room into science stuff, a dude who gets a knife tossed into his forehead, a guy that Pred kills kinda lazily as he moves on, and finally, a dude he tosses into a window. With that much blood, I think that guy's dead. The Predator heads out into the hallway and kills another guy by breaking his back against a wall, then uses that dude's gun to mow down three more victims, two in the hallway and one at the top of the stairs. Then he grabs one of the pretty masks they have on display and looks through it, which somehow lets him see through the eyes of the mask Rory has, and then track down his personal info so he can dox him? What's even going on here? Since when is this a thing? As the loony bus happens to pull up to the science lab, weird security cam style shots show us more kills. There are three dead bodies in this hallway right here, and two in the stairwell. Oh, make that three. Three in the stairwell, for six total. Then, as the bus occupants wonder what's going on, they see another kill. This dude thrown from the rooftop to his death on the ground. Splat. I do like the bouncing helmet after he lands. McKenna points out the Predator running around on the roof and tells the loonies it's the same alien he saw in Mexico, and that he wants to kill it for taking out his partners. They stage a distraction involving more shithouse jokes from Coil. Hey Baxley! If your mom's vagina were a video game, it'd be rated E for everyone. And in the resulting chaos, they're able to take control of the vehicle and ditch their camo-clad babysitters. Time for a field trip, motherfuckers! By this time, Brackett has made it outside and ends up in a two-tiered race with the Predator, which the loonies see from their school bus. Hey, a Pred dude! All right! She ends up on top of their bus, and they chase after the Predator like this is Mad Frickin' Max, but Pred just pops a tire, and Brackett jungle to jungles her foot, so the loonies end up losing their prey. They see some G-Men starting to arrive, but a convenient fleet of motorcycles allows another variation on an old classic. Get to the choppers! And so, one American badass clothesline later, the loonies and Brackett are able to easy ride around out of there. As for the Predator, he hitches a ride on a truck and gets four kills in the process, using his shuriken and wrist blades to chop down all the dudes in the back before he engages in some very out-of-character humor. Everything okay back there? You fucking guy. Yo, Shane Black, a lot of your stuff is funny, dude, but you can't have every single character right down to the goddamn alien cracking jokes. A little goes a long way, you know? The loonies hide out in a motel called the Humdinger, good place to get a beach, and they try to make Brackett comfortable as she finally sleeps off the trank juice. Yar. It doesn't work, because obviously, but after failing to make a run for it, McKenna tells her that Traeger and his G-men will probably have her killed, so she might as well join forces with them to, uh, take down the Predator? I guess? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and it also doesn't help that these freaking characters just won't stop making jokes. It's called The Predator. 
It hunts people for sport. Technically, that's not a it's not a predator. It's like kind of a thank you. McKenna realizes that the predator is probably looking for the gear he stole, which is currently with his son. Rory ends up using the mask to get a little exposition in the form of a holographic movie. Uh oh, looks like some other predators have been making an ultimate predator using mad science. That experimental parole predator has landed on Earth by now, and he sends out some preddy dogs to track down his fugitive brother. McKenna gets home and finds that the box of preddy gear is empty, so he tells his wife Emily, played by Yvonne Strahovski, that they need to go find Rory, cause that kid be walking around trick-or-treating with a preddy mask taped to his head. Before they head out though, might as well have another scene of the loonies being cartoon characters while they make jokes about Emily's artwork. They're my unit, they're soldiers. Oh, there's his unit. <laughs> Whoa, Serena Joy painted that? While trick-or-treating, Rory gets picked on by those bullies from school, as well as, what, a random adult stranger who throws a beer at him? That guy definitely fucked up, because the Pred Helmet shoots him and blows up his house in an act of automatic retaliation. The loonies, now in separate vehicles, hear police reports about the explosion, since Nebraska went and randomly stole a cop car. That's at least three stars, right? They figure out that Rory must be at the high school baseball field? How did they? Whatever, fuck it right before a couple of preddy dogs show up to have themselves a taste of boy. Everyone rolls up in their vehicles, shoots their guns aplenty, and eventually the dogs are put down through awful looking CGI explosions and direct shots to the head. The latter only lobotomizing one of the dogs so it can be used for hilarious zany adventures later on. Lucky us! The fugitive predator appears, and after he drops nettles to the ground, everybody runs into the nearby school. Preddy follows, blowing shit up and looking cool like predators always do. He catches up to them, but before before he can finish strangling McKenna, he's interrupted and ripped out of the window by something. Why, it's the ultimate predator, who's yet another Yautja variation given to us, as though the OG predator wasn't cool enough. He definitely is, and in fact, let's take a moment to appreciate the actor and makeup team behind the predator's predator. The creature effects were done by Tom Woodruff Jr., who we've seen a lot on this channel since he worked on Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, and both AVP movies. In the AVP series, he also played various xenomorphs and the Pred Alien. But for this movie, he stayed out of the suit, and instead, the dreadlocked space hunter was played by Brian Alexander Prince, a 6'10 parkour athlete who had to spend all day on set wearing this ridiculously detailed suit. That's no small task, especially considering that with the mechanical mandibles on this thing, he couldn't even hear other people without a radio in his ear. Once they turn on the motors, all you hear is like, Aah! it's like, it's all back here, all the servos and motors are back here. Prince gave the role his all, even suffering bruises on his his nose from wearing the mask, and regardless of any other flaws this movie may have, we've gotta appreciate the people behind the Predator himself, because at least he still looks and acts cool. The two Predators get into a pretty one-sided PREDDY FIGHT! <laughs> And before long, the monstrous Ultimate Predator puts down the fugitive with ease. As the loonies hop into their trailer to escape, Ultimate Predator kills his ultimate prey with a punch to the face, followed by a classic despining. And yes, Predators go on the kill count. Always have, always will. They're just too cool not to. Although they do seem a little less cool when we get subtitled dialogue from them. I don't know, it just seems wrong, dude. The loonies take refuge at a barn where the movie takes a stab at character development. Look, Coyle and Baxley are besties. And McKenna wants to be a good dad. That's nice. While sciencing with Preddy's spinal fluid, Bracket discovers that the Yaoja are trying to improve themselves through genetic tinkering, retconning a reason behind all that spine ripping they're always up to. I think they're attempting hybridization. Thus, the gargantuan ultimate predator. That's cool and all, I guess, but then the movie takes it in this direction. You know, a lot of experts say that being on the spectrum isn't really a disorder. That's actually the next step in the evolutionary chain. Who boy! Quick, let's change the subject to the lobotomized space dog. Oh look, he's a good boy now! Out of frickin' nowhere, a government helicopter shows up, and after it lands, Traeger and his G-men get out, looking all sorts of pissed off. Traeger's looking for Preddy tech, and he tells Brackett that the Preds have been coming here more frequently because of climate change. They're trying to snap up all of our best DNA before we're gone. Pretty ridiculous, but even more ridiculous is why the fugitive predator was here in the first place. And that dead predator was bringing us a way to stop him. Wait, so the fugitive predator was like a conservationist preddy then? But hold up, we watched him kill like a whole buttload of humans. Well, I guess he could always be like a TR kind of conservationist. While G-goons beat up McKenna, looking for info about the preddy tech, other G-goons go through his house despite Emily's protestations. Hey, as long as they don't steal that Penny Arcade poster back there, right? The Stooges get theirs when the ultimate predator randomly crashes through the floor and kills them both with his wrist blade. One through the floor, which looks pretty bad, 
that, and the other, in a much more savage way, shanking him a bunch of times in the gut. Wait a minute, this computer doesn't even have Steam installed. What I even come here for? Now Rory can all of a sudden draw a map to the Predator spaceship, so Traeger kidnaps him in a helicopter and tells his men to kill Bracken and McKenna. McKenna is able to quip his way to freedom, and he kills his two captors with simple gunshots. Easy peasy! Bracken, on the other hand, is saved by a Deus Ex space dog who comes out of nowhere and coughs up a grenade. Bracken sticks that thing in the G-Man's vest and barely escapes before it goes off, killing the dude and thankfully ending this weird little barn sequence. But shit can always get stupider, and case in point, the other loonies show up in a stolen frickin' helicopter. Yep, they stole a helicopter. That's gotta be five stars for show. They use the chopper to follow the space dog to, uh, I don't know, man. This movie's a fucking mess. The G-Men go to their super secret area where they've been keeping fugitive Predator spaceship, and Traeger uses Rory to crack open the alien security system, which he's able to do with ease because, again, he has Hollywood autism. But before Traeger can start downloading all these Predator files, uh, don't Google Predator files, please, McKenna shows up, having been cloaked with that ball, I guess, and kills Traeger's Lieutenant Sapir by shooting him in the eye with a tranquilizer gun. Oh man, all these kills got that shiny CG look to them. We get lots more CG blood when the loonies show up outside and kill three government soldiers in their initial attack, all done with knives used for throwing, stabbing, and the horror movie mainstay, throat slitting. As Nebraska lights a cigarette, you know, like any smart soldier trying to hide, McKenna steps out of the ship with Traeger as his hostage. Before they can enact any plan, though, Lynch, who's far off with a sniper rifle, gets killed by the Predator in a lackluster way. Reek, reek, it rhymes with weak, as in weak-ass kill. Lynch shot off a flare before he died, so a firefight erupts, during which I see seven random government dudes getting shot, which I'll go ahead and count as kills, even though it looks like this third dude is reacting to shots that didn't actually hit him. That's okay, the rest of these extras did a real super job. After a while, the ultimate Predator shows up, and after crushing a vehicle, he also adds to the kill count when he tosses another random government dude into an electric fence. Yeah, that dude dead, he ain't playing like Dr. Grant. Ultimate Predator keeps on adding to the kills when he harpoons one dude through the chest and uses the tow cable to decapitate three soldiers who were driving in a Jeep. Not bad, Ultimate Predator, you're winning me over with shit like that. The UP ignores everyone else and just strolls on into the spaceship, leaving the last kill of the sequence to come courtesy of Nebraska, who shoots one of Traeger's dudes down to even the numbers between them and the G-Men. Then all of a sudden, the ultimate Predator starts talking to the humans using Traeger's Predator Translator system. Yes, it's as dumb as you'd think it'd be. Hello. I have enjoyed watching you kill each other. Especially when he starts saying that he wants to take McKenna home with him since he seems like a true warrior. He will be your leader. He will be my prize. The Pred tells the humans he's going to hunt them and gives them a head start, sending the loonies and the G-Men running into the woods in an uneasy alliance. As Ultimate Predator leaves the fugitive ship, blowing it up behind him, one of Traeger's dudes decides to randomly throw the Predator shuriken. It comes back and cuts his hand off, and when the guy loudly yells about it, Traeger mercilessly murders him in an effort to keep him quiet. Another of Traeger's dudes is pulled up into a tree and gets, uh, bitten by the Ultimate Predator? Oh, decapitated. And Yep, there's our ultimate pretty boy, I guess. Isn't he handsome, Traeger? More action and gunfiring commences, with Traeger now using the shoulder-mounted plasma caster, and ultimate predator keeps the kills coming by blowing one dude all to pieces with his wrist blade projectile. Oh, no, we don't need to see that in slow motion. It's not good enough for all that. They eventually manage to cover the predator with some flammable dust and light him up with a gunshot. Baxley senselessly leaps onto this mountain of flaming alien, causing Traeger to laugh at him before this happens. Yo, what the fuck? Did Traeger just die? Sorry, I blinked and missed it. Wasn't he supposed to be an important character or something? God damn, movie, get your shit together. The Predator throws Baxley against a tree, causing a branch to impale him through the back, then shoots another wrist blade into Coyle's side before falling backwards off a cliff. Bye! With the two bestie loonies, both mortally wounded, they make a silent pact and kill each other at the same time with near-simultaneous gunshots. This moment would have been a whole lot sweeter to me if either of those characters felt like actually actual human beings. The survivors are once again attacked by the ultimate predator, who growls the word McKenna to them. But turns out it's not Papa McKenna he's looking for, he wants Rory, cause, you know, evolution or whatever. McKenna. 
<laughs> Don't worry, Pred's got a kid-sized pod waiting for Rory on his secret hidden spaceship. McKenna and the last loonies, Nebraska and Nettles, get on top of the ship's roof while Brackett lands an explosive hit that gives it a rocky takeoff. It's still able to get pretty high up though, and when the Predator turns on the ship's shield system, we get a very cool action moment where McKenna and Nebraska get trapped on opposite sides of the force field while Nettles is cut down at the knee from the force, presumably dying after his body flies off the ship with no feet to land on. Nebraska, finding himself on the wrong side of the shield, decides to do McKenna a solid by sacrificing himself and jumping into the spaceship's engine, shooting at it while he does. It's a cool way to go out, I guess, especially since it works and the ship starts to falter. It crashes to the forest floor, as does McKenna, and Ultimate Predator steps out to whoop some ass of the dude who fucked up his ride. Before he can kill McKenna, though, Brackett jumps on the Predator's back it and shoots him in the head a few times. Then all sorts of shit happens to this poor alien. He gets knocked down, rolled around, that shitty kid activates his own ship's shield and cuts off his hand, and then finally, his own dog shows up out of nowhere again to once again give Brackett a weapon, which McKenna ends up using to blow the ultimate Predator into a Johnny Got His Gun condition. McKenna finishes the big bad Preddy Man off with a couple of gunshots to the head, and that's a wrap on this latest Yout Jaw variation. In a very tacked on epilogue, we see that McKenna has become part of the brass. Oh, and he has his kid working for the government now too. A scientist tells McKenna that they found a gift left over from the fugitive predator, and turns out that gift has a name. I guess you call it the Predator Killer. The Predator Killer is this thing, which attaches to a guy and preds him up in a complete ripoff of Iron Man. Did Shane Black steal a graphics package from the Iron Man 3 editing bays or something? The movie ends with some action hero lines that are just as awful as the rest of this shit. That's my new suit, Bubba. I hope they got into 42 long. How many people were killed by the Predators in the Predator? Let's find out and get to the Predator. Er, the numbers. Get to the numbers. There were 58 kills in The Predator, the second most of the series. The victims included 55 men, only a single woman scientist, one regular sized Predator, and finally one big ass Ultimate Predator. Great to see those key line wedges back in the pie chart, right? With a runtime of 107 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 1.84 minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to Nettles. I've always wondered what happens as a ship's force field is deployed, and now I know. And if you in its way, you can kiss your limbs goodbye. The all machete for lamest kill will go to Lynch, who was killed without any kind of fun fanfare. We'll see if Theon gets a better end later this year. And that's it. The Predator came out in 2018 and was co-written by Shane Black and Fred Decker, who also wrote The Monster Squad together. Probably explains why this movie was such a comedy. Before I let you go, I want to let you know that today's episode was brought to you by Case File, an awesome true crime podcast. Here on Dead Meat, we look at fictional horror, but Case File is your source for deep dives into investigations of solved and cold cases from around the world. Right now, they're doing a five part series about the Belanglo murders, investigating Australia's worst serial killer. Check that out and all their other episodes by subscribing and listening to Case File for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Next week is The Kill Count's two-year anniversary. But until then, I'm James Agedis. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this week's Kill Count. I want to thank some patrons like Justin Palger, Marshall Feinsilber, and Tenebrism. I also want to let you know that I'm going to be taking part in a horror documentary coming out called In Search of Darkness. There's more information about the documentary in the description of this video, so check that out. I'm so excited to be a part of it. And for next week, I have a very fun episode lined up. Thanks, everybody. Be good people.